Well, hello everyone. Welcome to a new episode of Blockchain Talks. I'm your host, uh, Addimi H of Gracious Interests. Now, uh, today's topic, I shall ma mainly talk about NFTs. Um, considering the discussion I had on Twitter, I will naturally show um, you the various conversations. It will be rebuttals against, well, prejudices concerning NFTs. Now, before we start, um, good news. I'm going to do small analysis of the current market. Very short, because the topic I want to cover is quite lengthy and needs quite some explanations. So as you guys can see, I'm on CoinGecko here. Good news is markets after finally sometime, few months, are turning green once again. As you can see here on screen, I'm going to zoom in on Bitcoin. We are crawling our way out of a bearish market, a long bearish market, whereby we took a nosedive from its recent all-time highs in November at about almost 70k and reached a depth point end of January near the 35k level. So almost halved uh, in value. Now, finally, we are back at more normal levels of above 40k i'm going to say now if you guys want to know how this is possible well a lot of things have been moving in the crypto market a lot of bullish signals but not much action meaning there were quite a lot of uh, companies investors actually making moves to adopt bitcoin to continue to further adopt bitcoin um variety of moves of promises etc etc but not a real action itself now in the last couple of days well it's february things have finally started moving um, the bears are out they got wrecked uh, especially two or three days ago with a nice up quick candle and since then we are reaching new higher highs so we are at about 40 for K level, uh, can it dip? It's always possible. This is just a little hopium uh, that is occurring. However, considering the growth, I might say it's relatively stable unless uh, something really, really bad happens. So finally, some good news. Um, well, finally, some good actionable news. It will be correct there. Now, let us come to the main Thing I want to discuss here and this is what sparked everything the discussions I have and I want to zoom in on um, it's concerning a post from Gumroad um, asking the opinion about NFTs from their user base uh, on your opinion more count more so it might be the case they are playing a little bit with NFTs um, probably thinking shall we allow it shall we incorporate it in our platform yes or no the feelings are mixed now um as you can see 99 of artists and creators despise nfts not necessarily true that 99 percent well let's just indulge into the comments i made that 30 uh, against 70 pro anti to zoom in here so this is my rebutal I said, look, um, for NFTs, myself, I'm quite an experienced crypto educator. I am involved with quite a few communities, I might dare so. Um, the biggest one, the Ravencoin community. Ravencoin is a blockchain specially designed for the transfer of digital assets or shortened but not uh, immediately correct for NFTs, really. Um, naturally, I also have experience on the Solana blockchain and on Ethereum. And so I'm talking here from experience. And in my experience, as you guys can see on screen, the greatest hate for NFTs stem from people having been scammed, the scams in the NFT world. Uh, I'm not going to um, put on pink glasses and say everything's fine. No, scams are occurring, um, various strategies to pump up the value of a variety of nfts are prevalent i must say as it is exist and it creates well hate and people getting distraught so people having been scammed keep that in mind not understanding nfts and merely seeing it as gpegs very important point more on that later 
and also only looking at the tremendous value some have with envy and not knowing how it became so this is a feedback loop from people having been scammed as an indirect or direct result depending on the context so i continue when people think nft will they think in pixel art you guys all know about people or uh, the crypto punks or the degenerate smokers or even the billion uh what was it again billion ape yacht club or something like it that's all pixel art however nfts have well other uses they have greater potential with them um, for example that i give here property incorporated i'm going to open it up it is a platform which makes use of nfts to sell property so this is their main page and this is going to be their website i'm showing it to you guys live here also been transacted from the leading real estate innovator so it is a real estate agent making use of blockchain technology making use of nfts i have frequently highlighted this as an example because to me it's one of the well best applications of blockchain technology um so yeah to close this one now oh another one is glenn fiddich smwe which sells whiskey with nfts um glenn fiddich is a uh, whiskey and you know they produce whiskey sell it etc and in a recent article i found out that they actually are indulging also in blockchain technology and in the nft market meaning they are creating nfts that which uh with the buyer buying the nfts will also have ownership of the underlying bottle so they are practically selling their whiskies through nfts another nice application nfts i continue there's more behind the simple creation of art there's innovation application of its core concepts being and what is its core concept well um that of ownership it isn't really put clearly here um subtle transition of day-to-day -day services of use cases as an example nft tone is an alternative to the centralized spotify you must know spotify is a music platform with by well where uh, various music artists can upload their own podcasts their own music etc etc uh, but it is well the data their music and their art is being saved on centralized servers in hands of well spotify incorporated or even facebook I believe uh, both uh are under the same well industry group that of meta or facebook if i'm not mistaken here so it's based on centralized service however nft tone makes use of blockchain technology meaning it isn't well the music itself isn't saved on centralized servers but saved onto the blockchain which is supported by a distributed network of people worldwide ascribing to that platform so it's a nice little difference for us normal users not much changes we can go to the platform we click on it and we can listen to the music we do not see the tech in action but it is there it is distributed and it makes it more censorship resistant etc etc so it is well an application of what i've written here there's innovation application of its core concept and a subtle transition of day-to-day -day services and use cases towards blockchain with nfts in such a sense that you do not notice it loving it so closing notes i shared a few times does the many copies of mona lisa make it less valuable Ask yourself this question. If you can answer it correctly, you understand what NFTs are. Um, the simple answer is no, it doesn't make it less valuable. It makes it even more valuable by reason that the tens of thousands of copies do not detract from the original, but actually make it more renowned and give it more value in perception and in renown. That's how NFTs work. You keep the original, which is saved on the blockchain. It doesn't matter if other people are making copies of it. The original remains within your hands and all the other copies being distributed only can give it more renown, more renown to the artist, more renown to the art. So in itself, it is a good thing. Now, 
let's go onward to the review tools and comments. So you, we have here Dark Forest Press. To highlight it, note we understand that there are entries in a ledger with a small amount of data attached to them, usually a URL to a PNG or JPEG. We know that NFTs are a greater fool scam. This is an opinion, not really a correct statement. We know that most are devastatingly ecologically damaging and that the rest are merely damaging. Um, more on that on this later, greater fool scam. As mentioned, indeed, there are scams and NFT projects being hyped um, for people who want to make big money with it. I'm not going to say it isn't true because it is. However, the biggest mistake he makes here is, no, we understand that they are entries in a ledger with a small amount of data attached to them, usually a URL to a PNG or JPEG. Not really. Um, the association with JPEGs and PNGs is a result of the booming art industry being introduced to blockchain technology. A lot of artists will create pixel art, crypto art, but in itself, an NFT doesn't need to be an image. And I'm going to show you how. Um, this is my Ravencore wallet. So you guys can see a little bit of my, uh, well, how much I've saved here. This is an asset I'm holding, a uh, digital asset. This is an NFT straight from my private Ravencore wallet. You can see here, Wakes Raven. What is this? Well, this isn't a JPEG or a PNG. This is a fully functional website. So it isn't necessarily an image or art. It can be something else. It can be music. It can be audio. It can be video. Now, the video here isn't working. Probably a mistake they've made. But it can also be programs and text. And as you guys can see, this is a fully functional website with which I can interact with. Even better yet, I can be re uh, redirected towards a var variety of other sites. It is fully interactive. So this already debunks the URL. Now, um, the URL is naturally something needed. And as you guys could see on screen, I was indeed redirected towards a new tab. It opened up, and you had a little URL. Now, however, those who have a quick eye will have noticed that I was being redirected towards Cloudflare uh, slash EPS, meaning I was being redirected towards a site in order to read the data that has been encrypted on the blockchain, meaning the URL itself is nothing more than an address through which I'm directed to see on the blockchain itself the data where it is saved. If the EPFS is invalidated, it doesn't matter. I can still reach it through other means and make it visible. So the URL is a little bit sketchy, but it works. So, and with that, I already debunked. It isn't necessarily a PNG or a JPEG. Now, let's continue. The ecological damage. Now, I'm going to get deeper into it here. To debunk the ecological damage, see link. Um, with this, I'm referring once again towards another comment uh, within this topic here. And we're going to look through it. So this guy responded, I think, Pixel art, yada, yada, yada. What NFTs add to their, to error of those beyond massive carbon emissions? Also, what's wrong with pixel art? Uh, like the rest of the bad solution looking for a problem. Once again, it's an opinion, not a very much stated fact. Nice. That you suggest you look deeper into blockchain technology. Carbon emission is a felt like I'm already to country's own field policy on energy production. Let's get deeper. So this is the factual rebuttal. Mining crypto is about profitability. So we're not talking about NFTs here. We're talking about blockchain technology and mining. Mining cryptocurrency is about profitability. You want to have the lowest costs possible and earn the highest amount of well coins from the network you are supporting. Uh, by reason with mining, you earn coins by supporting the network. So it's about profitability. Want as much coins as possible for the lowest cost you can get. That's what I'm talking about here. Biggest cost is energy demand. Naturally, 
to keep your computers running or your dedicated miners, you need energy. That's a fact. I'm not going to lie about it. Some of those things get, can be quite thirsty uh, energy wise. But miners will look at ways to lessen that cost. That's very important. How do they fix it? Well, some invest to create their own energy autonomously. Think in terms of photovoltaic cells, solar panels on your roof to produce your very own energy. It's renewable technology. Uh, some people have invested in uh, hydroelectricity, small, well, generators, I'm going to say, which make use of the flow of local energies to produce electricity in their homes. Um, <clears throat> They got a drink this whole thing, got a little itch. Some use geothermal energy, and El Salvador on that account is a big one. They are using volcanic energy to support the energy demand of their own miners. It's a great thing. So, those are renewable energy sources. Or, what I also do is use waste energy <clears throat> by reason. There's a lot of industries, especially the petrol industry, which has waste energy, waste petrol they cannot use on the markets and are being flared off, burned. Now, that heat that is being produced by flaring or burning can still be used to power other uh, generators. Those generators can produce additional electricity to feed the miners, meaning that the entirety of the energy production of the petrol industry becomes well used naturally for uh, bitcoin mining or block or crypto mining but the process itself is less of an energy waste it becomes more rendable so in a certain sense it is innovating the energy market and its actual gr uh, footstep isn't as dark as people think it is it is actually much much greener <coughs> Ooh, my apologies there Let's continue. The carbon problem so frequently quoted is a bit of a false flag study. Uh, with that, I'm referring to what's a study made by Oxford University, whereby students, professors, or academics, let's call them it uh, that way, were trying to investigate how much energy does Bitcoin use. And the study itself is riddled with mistakes. Um, getting deeper into it here. A very short synopsis version here. The academics only looked at a very rough estimation of energy need and extrapolated data, meaning they took the energy demand of some older mining rigs, but still in use with uh, some good hash rates, monitored how much energy they demanded, and extrapolated it. How did they extrapolate it? Well, they verified the hash rate that miner put out and will mirror it towards the total hash rate of Bitcoin at that given time and make, came to the conclusion, okay, for the hash rate it currently has, so many miners are needed to achieve it from this type we have here and we are monitoring. Now, that's the first logical fallacy here because the entire market exists out of various miners with various hash rates with various power demands. Naturally, there's also the use of the mine itself, how long it is running. Now, traditionally, you might say it must run 24 seven in order to mine. This isn't necessarily the case. Some miners are switched off depending on profitability, depending on the geographical location and energy available. So there's already a little bit of a sketchy assumption. So they extrapolated data and said, okay, we need so much. And then they said, okay, that's the amount of energy being used. But is it green? Well, what they did was to research where most of, well, the highest amount of hash rate came from on the blockchain. And they tried to point it to an approximate geographic center, as I mentioned here. And they said, oh, look, we found out that the majority of hash rates being produced are in China. And China, well, out there they looked at the policies of the country to verify, well, what is their main energy source to produce electricity? 
<clears throat> and it was called a not so energy friendly resource. And that's what I'm telling here. Based on geographic center, they took a look at the main policies of local energy and producing and wrongfully associated it with mining. Why wrongfully? Because they neglected the mechanics of mining pool and had no idea how much is produced autonomously. Now, I'm going to zoom in <clears throat> on these statements. Understand what are mining pools. Mining pools are nothing more than dedicated servers whereby various miners worldwide are going to push the results of their home computers towards to. So, <clears throat> for example, I'm mining here in Belgium, Brussels. My miners are generating a certain amount of hash rate. They are mining, they are mining. But the results and that hash rate is going to be redirected towards another server elsewhere, not in Belgium or in Brussels. I can have it rerouted towards somewhere in China um, on a central server where other miners are interconnected, whereby the pool adds the total amount of hash rate from all the different miners worldwide into one big chunk to mine on the blockchain. Meaning, well, that the server itself, its energy use is much, much smaller compared to all the energy that is being used by the computers distributed worldwide. Meaning, my computer may use X amount of kilowatts uh, mining here locally in Belgium, but it doesn't mean those kilowatts are from China themselves. By reason, I'm using local energy from the local grid here. My computer uses energy which has been produced here in Belgium, not from China. So that's a logical fallacy the study made. That's why I highlighted the mechanics of mining pools. I am rerouting hash power. The energy I'm taking is from the grid here. And how green is that energy? Well, it depends if I'm producing my <clears throat> electricity autonomously through renewable energy sources, or if I take it from the grid. And if it's from the grid, well, what are the technologies implemented here in Belgium by our government to produce electricity. You see my point here. So it's a logical fallacy they made and the energy consumption is actually more widespread and worldwide. So those are fallacies and that's how I debunk this point. <clears throat> and I continue further. You know, to do a multitude of mine rely on renewable source uh, resources and waste energy from existing industries. And those that do take off the grid, well, blame is on, on the miners itself. It's like I said, it is local government not investing in green energy or making efforts to do so. <clears throat> By reason, if the Belgium government says we are going to invest in um, liquid petrol gas uh, to produce our electricity, the fault is not my own or that of the entire blockchain that the energy I'm consuming isn't green. It's from the governments itself. If the governments and the various institutes saying, yeah, but it isn't really renewable, uh, all that blockchain technology and Bitcoin, well, the blame isn't on the network itself. The blame is with the governments itself. And that's a little um, victim pushing that's going on. They are coming to a conclusion whereby they themselves are at fault. The miners themselves are only trying to reduce costs as much as possible. The majority will try to find means well, to lower their energy costs. So they will start investing in renewables or buy new machines, which are, uh, well, have had better innovation. Uh, with that, I mean, which use less electricity, yet less energy, but give higher outputs. So there is a move towards renewables, towards a green thing. So the entire argument that uh, Matthew Walton here made and others is actually debunked already by reason that their opinion is based on a faulty study. Actually, I'm going to continue here. 
that's the debugging of the ecological damage. Then there's this case. Blockchains consume more energy than small developed countries. Yolink doesn't debunk that fact. May says that's not our fault. That is how energy is produced. The problem is, you know, how that energy is produced and you actively choose to make use of it. Now, a um, bit of a shitty argument, little bit of a brain fart if I do say so myself. And the answer is quite simple. You have to realize that blockchains are supported by people worldwide. Is something I mentioned earlier when explaining about, um, well, the mining pools. I'm mining here in Brussels, and there are others mining also in Brussels, and the rest of the country, and the rest of Europe, and the rest of the world, all coming together in a variety of mining pools. Um, and then you've got some idiot who tells me it uses more energy than small developed countries. That's correct. Might use more energy than a small developed country because the amount of people supporting the network, well, their quantities also are more than a small developed country in numbers. Even the blockchain, the, uh, in, sorry, on the Bitcoin blockchain, are more than 1 million miners, well, that means a small developed country with more than 1 million people is actively participating in the network. So it is obvious that it will use as much energy. It's a literal brain fart. Now, there is no central energy use, uh, central energy use, it is distributed. Distribution is key. The problem that is with non-renewable energy or energy in general is the centralized production of it. Whereas distributing, uh, distributing the energy is the real problem with energy. It's not that in this world there isn't enough energy for everyone. No, as a matter of fact, there's plenty of energy everywhere. The problem is with distribution, meaning the necessary infrastructure to support distribute the energy that has always been the problem and this is what i'm highlighting here so is there anything else here yeah uh he was blocked i deblocked him for this thing are you there but you like my new avatar i'm not interested really let's continue here so people having Let's continue. So greatest hit for NFT stems from people having been scammed. So that's a response I received. Then there's Paracosmic Thumb. Uh, small profile. Or is it the fact that almost every artist had their entire portfolio stolen and minted as NFTs against their wishes and the companies that mint them know this and ignore DMC? Uh, it is an assumption that companies know. And the reason if you're a small time artist if you're a small-time artist and you have no renown companies won't know who the original artist is simple as that so brain fault really now the main counter argument here is entire portfolio stolen and minted as nfts it happens i'm not going to debunk that one i know it happens i've seen it happen and i've had multiple cases with people asking me uh, how to continue. Continues people that love NFT step from a place of profit without actually caring about it. your actual creation itself. You said it has great potential, then how bloody la yada ya. Um, more on that on the, the minting process. If you said there's great potential, that how ways to fix the 80% are fake criminal or scam instead of acting like it's not an issue. <clears throat> now, Coincidentally, uh, yesterday I was in a Ravencoin space uh, talking about this, and this is actually a solution. Blockchain is an open ledger, an open distributed ledger, whereby all transactions can be seen and verified. Now, if you are talking about NFTs, well, you will need, and this is the main issue with artists, you will need something that relays back to you that makes known that the art or the NFT is from you. A blockchain technology is entirely anonymous. You cannot see who created it. You do not know who created it, minted it, distributed, owns it. You can't see it apart from naturally the wallet addresses. 
as an artist, you are seeking for renown. Otherwise, you wouldn't put your art out. How can you do it? Well, quite frankly, solution is obvious. Feedback loops and signatures of designation, meaning you are going to incorporate signature of your own into your art. That makes it unmistakably yours. Uh, with that, I mean a signature which feedbacks toward anyone else who owns your NFT straight back to you. It can be a simple QR code when scanned. Well, <clears throat> that opens up a new tab and redirects you towards the artist's official website, towards his social media profile. See what I'm getting here? It is a signature which designates who the real artist is. And it can simply be, very simply be incorporated. So as a matter of fact, what the actual creation itself, and this is actually nothing more than a far cry, well, a desperate cry for, we want the attention because others are taking a hike with the art we created, but we do not get a renown. My answer is put in a signature which feedbacks straight to you. Simple answer. Naturally, uh, some people do not seem to get plain English. So the fuck are you talking about? If an artist like Louis doesn't want her shit on the blockchain, but someone mints it and sells it. And if what you're saying going to prevent that, indeed, the QR code or the signature prevents it from happening. If the QR code redirects you towards his or her official website, and the website, it reads, I do not indulge into NFTs, so any NFT copies available aren't mine, well, that's reason enough for any platform to block the API, burn the NFT, and kick off the imposters. That's a feedback loop right there. So the fuck are you talking about? No, no. This is a valid solution. It's just some dumb fuck who doesn't get it. So what any of you going to say? Nothing. Continue, because at this point, I... Well, um, what's the proper word again? I acknowledge it was about renown and not so much about the art itself. I said, look, if not, it puts its art out, it will be copied nonetheless. Ask yourself the question, why would you share your art if not for people to enjoy it? That is the main purpose of art. People, well, artists make art to convey a message, a deeper meaning, to steer something deep within people. Otherwise, you wouldn't share your art. Um, and will be copied nonetheless. How so? Well, everything you put online on the internet can easily be copied. It happens, period. And if you want credit for your art, well, you need to sign it or make sure people will find you in order to get your renown. And naturally, we have a Karen uh, jumping in on the argument because we use our art to pay our bills, deserve respect, should profit of their work and not have it stolen. Fact is, it pay to is mind-boggling to me. Well, quite frankly, we respect the artists and I respect your hustle. That's why I mentioned give it a feedback loop. Make sure people find out about you. There's nothing wrong with uh, wanting to earn money on your art. But if I see a rebuttal like that one, I'm thinking, okay, you're spreading it. You want to make bills. Why aren't you exploring this new industry where quite obviously money is being made? What prevents you now? If you say, I don't trust it, I don't want it to, it's fine. It's your personal opinion. But do not start complaining if others do so in your name. Do not start complaining that you have disrespect when others are, well, respecting your art and making you more renowned. Your first thing as an artist on that account shouldn't be, I hate it and they stole it. And I continue doing whatever I want and selling it whatever I want and uploading it on the internet. That's a big mistake on your part. Make your art more exclusive. Make it known where you are, where you stand, <clears throat> unlimited available. Don't put it out for free and expect people to respect and pay you for things they can easily copy. <laughs> um, also, yeah, uh, there were other accounts uh, blocked and 
ignored by now um who were into fursona porn etc and they were the kind that were complaining the most yeah I believe you can even see it here i can uh, continue here oh yeah uh, let's delve deeper here regardless you belittle a group instead of creating dialogue and i wonder why no one wants to talk <clears throat> i'm talking uh dialogue has been created on director with 20 years of creative experience yeah i was going to show you this one of experience only not foreign artists not our sons it could be sweet but dialogue like this are an immediate turn off um i can immediately disprove she wasn't open this is a profile this is our at G etsy shop that's karen let's take a look at her thing she, do mind she's an associate art director by day 20 followers 38 following so the main argument here and that's one of the re, uh, one of the previous arguments i made it's not about the money some of them just want renown and lack it and others have taken a run with their art and actually made it more interesting than themselves so it isn't really um the art itself and people stealing it is a tale the matter of fact is they want to renown they didn't get so it's really a hypocritical move but i can understand it i can understand it so and i mentioned here the audience is pulling all part of the audience yada 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 like i said everything works without invite those who do nothing amount to nothing blah. let your voice be heard <clears throat> if she wants to come up and indulge into nfts it's free for all you can do so you can easily sign up on rarible open sea uh, raven mint ravenist whatever you know, kind of platform and start minting your art it isn't that difficult anyone can start with it and if you don't know how well like i said i'll gladly still with advice and pointers that's the reason why i'm a crypto educator oh look uh got uh, censored here um yeah i know this was a little tirade uh which left me to make uh, the other statement is there something else nope let's get back here this um still can easily be verified securities can be built in so continuation of my rebutal <clears throat> uh, concerning um signatures and not artists not getting their renown by incorporating something very simple signature maybe the first hype before it matures why did you put still in quotes do you not consider that 80 percent of entities on opc are still in art as actual theft as a matter of fact there are no official graphs. It's a number being pulled out of his arse. Um, how do I know it's not 80%? Well, quite a lot of artists start on OpenSea or Rarible or any other platform, mint their art, but notice they do not really have the renown or respect or even demand for their art um, they thought they would have. And their tokens remain in limbo on the platform itself. It doesn't get sold and so to save face you've got plenty of them who deleted their accounts but the art remains on the blockchain and they will happily profile it and say yeah they've stolen my art uh, it's not mine they're kidding themselves greater percentage of that does it now there are factual steals uh well stealing is even uh, a bad word i probably moreover say pirated meaning copied art available on Pinterest, Etsy, etc., and minted it onto the blockchain and profiling as if being the artist. Uh, meaning the original is still available on the artist's own platform, but people just took a copy and minted it. Our actual stone theft, where if you buy an NFT, there's transfer of ownership. <clears throat> um, yeah, so this is externally. Now, what I mean here with transfer of ownership is that you have quite a lot of artists uh, who put their art on a variety of platforms and naturally sell it um effectively giving away ownership of the token towards well the buyer so they have no real rights anymore unless the platform says you can get a commission each time your art is being sold here on the platform for example if i create uh crypto art Put it on OpenSea or even install whatever other platform. I may have the option to say 5% percent 
commission each time it is being sold, meaning I sell my NFT now to another guy. This guy holds it in his wallet. I don't have it anymore. But if that guy on that same platform we both are in sells it once again to what someone else on the platform, that transaction with which I wasn't uh, intimate with or I don't know about will let me receive a 5% commission. It's a possibility, but the platform needs to enable it. So in that account, it's not really stealing because both these guys who are doing the transaction can still do with the art whatever they want. They can and print it, put it on shirts and selling it. They can make wallpaper from it and put it on their walls, etc., etc. But I will only get my commission from a transaction of ownership. That is all. And that is the important issue I want to address and why it is important to include within your art a digital signature that gives a feedback loop towards the artist itself so that you can get the renown you want. It's really, all these arguments here being made are about renown. Almost no artists want their art as NFTs. They are stolen. La, la, la. So that's an opinion. To be honest, I'm involved with the Ravencon community. All are genuine artists making it available on the blockchain. So this is a faulty opinion. It's bullshit. If you advise or blockchain cloud, yada, yada, yada. So a little going down the road there. I'm going to get away with it. Here's another one, uh, quite interesting. What value does any NFT actually possess? I know he was trying to be a skeptic here, but we are going to indulge into it anyway. What value does an NFT actually possess? The amount of crypto that is used to buy it. How so? Well, naturally, you can mint your coins, uh, your tokens, your art on the blockchain, but it doesn't give it intrinsic value. It only gets its value when people buy it, when the transaction made, well, that you buy it really. Um, I'm trying to find a way here to put it into plain English terms. If you buy it, you are actually backing the digital asset or the NFT by coins or tokens with which you bought it with. If you meet your art as an NFT, and let it remain idly on the platform, it will not have real value. It's valueless. But when is value added? The second that someone buys it and says, okay, I will give you 12 ETH for it, those 12 ETH will back the asset, the NFT itself. It will be attached to it, meaning that the <clears throat> NFT, its value, will from then on be linked to the value of the underlying coins with which it was bought. That's what gives an NFT value. It's very simple. So with that was the main reason why I said the amount of crypto that is used to buy it. What value does crypto have? So he's trying to be a smart ass. So I said, see CoinGecko or CoinMarketCap. Why did I mention it? Well, quite frankly, there's an entire mechanism which gives value to cryptocurrency. It's about supply and demand. It is about money being invested in it. It's about rarity. It's about scarcity. Market cap here is the total amount of money for Bitcoin, as you can see here on screen, being invested into the blockchain net, well, uh, sorry, into the Bitcoin network that is stuck within its blockchain. This is the 24 trading volume, meaning how much money is being moved within that network. And so I said, see CoinGecko coin market cap. By reason, market cap decides what the value is of your coin in relation to its supply and demand. How rare it is, how scarce it is. Simple metric. Naturally, he tries to be even more of a smart as and says, I'm talking about inet value, not value given by a bunch of dudes from the same Discord pretending that a Trend coin made after a dog meme is worth actual real world resources. Why is a Bitcoin worth so much real money? Like I said, there's market cap. And if you want some practical examples, reason millionaires, billionaires invest in it. Otherwise, it wouldn't have a fucking market cap. By reason, El Salvador has it as legal tender, meaning they can use Bitcoin to buy a variety of goods within their economy. That many of your senators have it in their portfolio. 
is renowned, uh, it is known, plenty of senators, diplomats, and even world leaders have within their portf uh, investment portfolios cryptocurrency. Simple as that. Tesla and many other companies also accept it as payment form. It is money. It is money being used to give value towards digital assets to the NFTs. So this exchange was actually one big brain force from this uh, cool through Simple as that. Uh, perhaps as an ending note here, hey, former anti NFT, so it's a little insult I received here. I'm curious what comment do you have on community being so prevalent with bad actors, art theft, and it was extremely questionable political ideology. Let's be brutally honest here. I said I don't deal in identity politics and measure people on merits. In fact, it's more about me. Stolen art is less prevalent than taught, and a multitude of platforms demand. KYC bearing many frauds. Once again, I am referring towards the NFT platforms here, but then naturally about digital signatures and traceability towards the original artists. Because, and that's something um, many people who lack knowledge about NFTs know, is that a majority of platforms, of NFT platforms, NFT exchanges, ask a KYC. It's an abbreviation for know your customer, meaning they will ask about your identity and about your presence on the internet. If you type in, I'm an artist, I'm here to sell my art and mint it as NFTs, well, they will ask about your identity. They want to know, are you genuine or not, in order to prevent frauds like uh, the ones the, all those guys were mentioning about from happening. It happened in the past. We know the market is moving towards security measures. And naturally, there are always some profiles which might escape um, the KYC, meaning that they are small enough and can imitate the original artist good enough to fool uh, the systems in place. But in the end, if the original artist says, no, no, I am the real one and comes up with definitive proof, those accounts can easily be barred uh be banned sorry not barred watching way too much the simpsons there so those accounts can actually be banned kicked off the platform the platform itself can say look those nfts minted are from that original artist those which are still present on our platform will now lock out the api which is uh, nothing more than a referral program enabling users to see the NFT. It's getting blocked, becomes invisible, and the tokens itself are being moved out of the wallet straight into a burn wallet. What is a burn wallet? Well, that's a separate place, a wallet, which holds coins, tokens, whatever, but where none has access to, meaning if it's sent towards a burn wallet, no one can take ownership of those coins. They remain locked forever away cannot be used anymore so those are security measures in place um, with that i believe i have rebuted most of the arguments i'm going to stop sharing my screen here and with that i want to say thank you guys for watching i hope this was insightful and cleared up plenty of um well was the correct word again. Uh, <laughs> so, well, plenty of counter arguments against NFTs of, well, um, explained plenty of the counter opinions, etc., etc., against NFTs, really. Uh, that's all what I wanted to say. So, once again, thank you guys for watching. If there are still uh, com uh, comments, uh, I wanted to say questions, that's the word. If there are still questions, please do reach out to me on Twitter or my social media or even down below in the comments. If you like this video and my other streams, like, subscribe. You guys know the drill. If you want to help support me, various links in the description down below. I thank you all for watching and up until next time. Bye.